A neat fact about NodeScript is that it gives us access to a bunch of web APIs that are easy to implement using Node.js. The official node for max examples include one about creating and running a WebSocket server. I'm going to show you the opposite, how to make Max behave like a WebSocket client. Of course, for testing we will need a server ourselves, so let's start by creating one. We make up a server folder and call npm init to create a package.json file. We then install Express as our application server and the socket.io package, which provides a simple WebSockets implementation. Let's also add an npm start script that runs our index.js, which we will also need to create. We start by requiring express, the built-in HTTP module, which we pass the express app. We need this to hook up socket.io, which we do next. To get this running, we need a root route, which we use to just serve an HTML file from our root directory. Now I'm going to paste in some HTML rather than typing it all from scratch. It's basically taken from the official socket.io getting started guide and modified just a little bit for our purposes. There's just a big black container in here with a little form where we can type text. Let's start our server and take a look. Here it is, pretty straightforward. Next, we need to actually create our WebSocket connection. This is done by simply implementing the connection event listener of the IO object. For the moment, let's just spit out a log message when a new client connects. Of course, on the client, we need to perform the mirrored action. We start by including the socket.io.js client script. One of the benefits of using this library in connection with an express server is that it automatically provides the client code at this URL. Then after the DOM has loaded, we create a socket. That's it. Let's restart our server and see what happens. A user connected, hooray! We call npm init in our root directory and install socket.io-client. In a file we call equally socket.io-client.js, we require the max API as always and the socket.io client library. We declare a global socket variable because we're going to need it in multiple max handlers. First we add a connect handler, which we pass a URL parameter. We tell IO to connect to that URL. Next, we create a max patch where we load that script, start it, and call connect.
and voila, in the server log we see that a second user has connected. To close the loop, let's add a disconnect handler. In it, we simply close the socket on the client side. And furthermore, we add a message handler to actually send messages to the server. On the server, let's first listen for the disconnect event. We restart, connect, and afterwards disconnect. And here is our message. Alright, what do we do when a message arrives? Let's do the easiest thing possible and transmit it to all connected clients. Socket.io is capable of much more subtle ways of routing, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Now is also the time to focus our attention on the browser client again. When a message is received on the socket, we just set the message's div's inner text to that message. All right, let's send a message from the max patch by simply preparing an integer with message. And it works. There's one more tweak I'd like to show you. By attaching an event listener to the button, we can send a talkback message from the browser. Just don't forget to empty the input box afterwards. On the server, we need to provide a way of relaying those talkback messages too. This time we're calling socket.broadcast.emit, which means nothing else than send to everybody but the sender. That way we can avoid unnecessary traffic. Back in the node for max JavaScript file, we just need to register a callback on the socket like we have done so many times now. Basically, we can choose the event string, talkback, quite freely, please refer to the documentation. In it, we just send the message out the node scripts objects outlet. Accordingly, we create a route object and look for talkback messages. Let's try it out, enter a message in the browser. And here it is. If you think this foo, you can leverage all the awesomeness of WebSockets, for example, scripting patches from one to the other, even over the web, if you like, etc. Socket.io will even let you transmit binary data. Maybe I'll try that out in the future.